You guys know that I love Olympia as much as the next guy, right? I love investigating Bethy and Farmer John's problem. Like, who, do, who doesn't like that? But Olympias are great, right? They incentivize you to work hard. They let you develop your problem-solving skills, all this good stuff. But there is something missing in Olympias, right? It's all done by yourself. It's like one hour to four hour test. It's, it's limited, right? So what I wanted to talk today is if you're interested in computer science, what else you could apply your epic coding skills to? Hello everybody, I'm Farrar, and today we are talking about coding internships. Now, as I have said in my previous videos, Yusuko is a pretty small subset of CS, but it is still useful, okay? Don't get me wrong. Just because I make fun of Bessie doesn't mean I hate Yusuko, okay? Like, Bessie's just a cow. Why would I Why would I not make fun of her? But anyway, the point is, today I wanted to talk about first, why you should do coding internships, second, what skills you need to do them, and third, how you guys should go about looking for them. Because I know the other question that a lot of people have, and I personally had no idea going into it, because, like, from 6th grade to, like, 10th grade, I was only doing Olympiads and it was kind of sad. I mean, okay, fine. I did some other stuff, but like, Olympiads were my main focus and I didn't really have, I, c I couldn't see outside of the box, right? Like, the two things that people in my school basically did were like, Olympiads and research programs, right? Like, everybody's like, hey, did you get into that research program? And I'm like, no, I didn't. But now I realize that like, research programs and Olympiads are a very narrow view of the world. So, let us talk about software internships because those things are cool. So, first off, why the heck would I want to do a coding internship when I could go to SSTP, get matched with a professor, and do a top of the line research program thing and then put it on my resume it'll be epic well my friends if you're interested in cs research programs are probably going to be the most boring thing in the universe to you because first off getting research with a computer science professor is really hard and second off it costs a ton of money so it's not really applicable to everybody right also research is not for everybody right like research is basically thinking about problems for like your whole day i personally like making products more so that's why software internships are really cool like, research itself is not horrible, right? Like, I personally have bad experiences with it, but other people love it, right? Like, basically, you pay thousands of dollars to work with grad students on, like, a mini project that is probably not going to go anywhere. Don't get me wrong, right? Like, if you guys are really good at research, like, I know that there's some of you guys out there who are, like, solving Alzheimer's and submitting the synopsis and all that good stuff, but that's not me, okay? I'm not that kind of guy. So, basically, the reason why coding internships are good is because, first off, you're working on a product, so that's cool, right? And also, you're building real life skills. Like if you're planning on becoming a software engineer, right? It's very unlikely that you're going to be doing research, right? The only time you'd be doing research is you want to be like a CS professor or something, like if you're interested in that kind of thing. But generally, if you're being a software engineer, doing a coding internship is literally exactly the same thing as what you might be doing in the future. So you learn new skills, right? You're learning how to code in new languages. You're learning how to work with different people. You're learning how to meet deadlines. You're learning how to code for a product. So all that's good stuff. Also, it could be a really big wake up call if you've only been doing Yusuko because, okay, there's a very big difference between Yusuko and uh, like software internships, okay? So let me break it down. First difference, Yusuko problems are about cows. Coding internship problems are also about cows. Not quite. <laughs> Oops. But in all seriousness, Yusuko problems are small, right? They're specific and they tell you exactly what you need to do and you have like 10 test cases that you had to pass. Like, if you pass those 10 test cases, the problem is completely solved. You're good. And they should theoretically be solvable in 4 hours, but if Brian Dean decides to troll us and give us a 5 hour problem in 4 hour contest, that would be kinda epic, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, that's how like all Yusuko platforms feel to me at this point. I, I guess I might be able to solve it in 5 hours, but 4, uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. But if we compare that to real life, right, if you're working on a product, the end goal is not like extremely specific, right? The people who you're working with are also trying to get this product out, they don't know exactly how the end product's gonna turn out. There's also no test cases that like Yusuko provides that you could just run your test and hooray, I'm done. I finished 10 test cases, like now I'm guaranteed to work, right? And then you gotta like find problems and fix them. Like in Yusuko, it's so specific. They give you an input, you just give out the right output. But in a company, you have to be able to like set up the right input, set up the right output, and like set up the entire function in between. Like when I got started, it was like really frustrating because like, I don't know if my thing works, right? There's no test for my thing. So I just had to write the test and if they work, I feel like them good, but like, am I, am I actually them? Are, are we sure about that? And I had to keep changing my code, right? Because my code has to interface with everybody else's code. Where it's like 20 people working together. Okay, that's another thing. You have to work with other people in this thing. It's not just a single, like, you're, you're by yourself in a contest. But yeah, like, the problem is not defined. You work with a lot of people. It's a completely different experience. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the most important thing. It's like the opposite of research programs in terms of cost, dude. Like in research programs, you pay them $10,000 to work for the professor, right? In software internships, they pay you thousands of dollars to work for them. Okay, to be fair, like, uh, professors have a low budget, so... I mean, that's fair. But still, it's a pretty good deal, not gonna lie. So those are basically the reasons why you should do an internship, right? Like, first off, you learn how to work with other people. You learn new coding skills that are more applicable to your future job. And third, you learn a lot of skills on how to actually design products. 
But now we actually got to talk about the skills you need in order to get into these internships, right? And this is where my boy Yusuko comes in. So you guys probably know that like company interviews are pretty identical to Yusuko, right? If you look on Geeks for Geeks, like if you look at their uh, Google interview questions, they're literally just Yusuko questions. Except the problem statements are like 50 times shorter, which is a very nice blessing, not gonna lie. Dude, Yusuko problem taking like 20 minutes to read them, it's not even fair. Dude, I've just come to the point where I just skip the entire front page, I read the input and output first, and if I can't tell from there, then I go back. It's so sad. So yeah, Yusuko is pretty useful for the interview, but not that useful for the actual coding part, because you're not coding up Dijkstra or DP or anything. All you're doing is you're coding a pretty simple algorithm, but the hard part is designing how your code should be structured so that first off, it's neat, easy to modify, and all that good stuff. So other skills you need on top of Yusuko, right? Because you had to use Yusuko to get into the company, but once you're at the company, you actually had to do stuff, right? You actually have to be really comfortable with coding in different languages. Like one product could be written in like five languages. I literally had to learn Go and Elixir and all these like completely random languages. I also had to figure out like what that Kubernetes is. It's like a distributed system software that Google provides. There's a ton of new things you had to learn and you had to learn them extremely quickly. So the best way to get that kind of skill is just to code in different languages and just learn like see the patterns and how it works. Like on your next use go, just try coding in Python and maybe you'll learn something new. Dude, Python is so good. It runs at twice the speed of C++. Wait, no, twice the time elapsed, so god dang, it's half speed, that's so sad. Next, you should be familiar with Terminal and Git, right? Because this is not like a baby project, right? You gotta work with other people and everybody else is using Terminal and Git, so uh, if you wanna be able to keep up, you gotta learn how to use Terminal and Git. And lastly, we gotta talk about why the heck they're good, right? There's no point talking about why you should get it if you can't even get it, right? So basically, from what I've seen, like, the best way to do it is just to email people, right? Like, this is the same thing for research internships, if you're emailing professors or whatever. But don't be afraid to email, right? Like the worst thing that can happen is that they just ignore you and you might feel a little bit bad, but nothing bad is gonna happen. Like the company I'm interning at is like a really small company, but it already has like four interns. So it's not like companies don't want interns, right? Like they're getting labor for cheaper, right? They want to hire interns, but the thing is you have to reach out to them first. Another thing is that like smaller companies are probably gonna give you better quality internships and are probably gonna need you more. So I would recommend reaching out to smaller companies, right? Because first off, they barely have enough people to like do the work they need. So they need you to just help with like some of the less intensive stuff. But at the same time, there's so much to do that they're not gonna give you some fake like side project. Like if you go to Google, right? They're just gonna give you some random coding assignment that doesn't even do anything. But like in these small companies, they're probably gonna give you something legit. Now, sadly, like, this completely depends on your location, right? Like if you live in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, like you're gonna have tons of internships just spinning around you. If you live like far away from a city or like, I don't know, there's not that many startups, it's gonna be kind of hard. So like, that's a problem, but like, you could probably work around it, right? Just email, see what happens. But in terms of what these companies look for, they basically like to see college level students, right? Because most of the interns they hire are college students. So if you wanna do an internship, what you should do is you should take classes. Like basically what I did is during sophomore year summer, I basically took CS61 A, B, and C at Berkeley. And those are a pretty good foundation for coding in like different languages and it also teaches you data structures and machine, how computers work. So it's important to take college courses because if you get good grades in those, then the companies know that you're actually up to the challenge. Another thing that these companies like to see is like your Olympiads. Like Olympiads are actually surprisingly good for making companies like you, right? Because it shows that you have problem solving skills and those are extremely important when you're working in a completely new environment. And another thing that they really like to see are coding projects, right? Because like these show that first off your experience with writing code by yourself and figuring things out on your own, right? Which is extremely important at a startup. And if you do even more advanced coding projects, those are even better, right? Cause then you can do advanced stuff. Very cool stuff. Epic, we are finally done with the video. That's all I wanted to talk about internships. But like, I feel like this is something that not many people know about and I just wanted to share my experiences with it so that you guys could try to figure out these internships on your own. I think they're a really good opportunity. So if you guys have time next summer, try them out. Try emailing a couple companies. And if you have some time next year, do some coding projects on your own. Take some college courses on your own. Like Berkeley has all their classes online, so try that out. So once again, I hope it was helpful. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching so much and see you guys next time.